In this video, I'm talking about learning and improving at art and how I keep it fun as a professional. Thanks and hope you enjoy it. Oh, by the way, if you'd be interested in learning from me, I have a course on proco.com where I go through the fundamentals of drawing. I talk about inking, the basics of drawing people and primitive shapes. Check out the link in the description to find it. Is just your drawing important? And how do you recommend learning it? Absolutely. Capturing energy in a drawing is both an art and a science. Firstly, I always emphasize knowing your character inside and out. You have to understand their motivations, fears, and ambitions. The more you know about who they are, the more energy and life you can inject into their depiction. Um, before I even start with the final lines, I often sketch with a red pencil. There's something about that vibrant color that just oozes energy. It lets me be loose and free, capturing the raw emotion and motion of the character. The red lines act like the character's pulse. They're the underlying life force, and they guide my more refined strokes later on. Dynamic poses and fluid lines are vital. Don't be afraid to exaggerate. Maybe a leg stretches out just a bit more than is natural, or an arm recoils with extra tension. These subtle exaggerations can emphasize the power or speed of the moment. Perspective is another tool in the toolbox. Want to make a character feel monumental? Use a low angle. It's like they're towering over the world full of might and determination. On the other hand, a high angle can make a character seem vulnerable, creating a different kind of emotional energy. And let's not forget facial expressions. The intensity of a gritted teeth the desperation in wide open eyes, or even the subtlety of a raised eyebrow can speak volumes about uh, what's going on inside a character's head. All in all, think of every drawing as a mini story. What do you want to convey? What's the emotional punch? If you can feel the scene's energy, if it plays out like a movie in your mind, then you're on the right track transfer that energy to paper and your characters will truly come alive. How do you recommend someone moves into penciling their work? Diving into the depths of the drawing process, moving from gesture to finished pencils and inks is a journey, let me tell you. Uh, gesture sketches are the soul of a drawing. They capture the raw emotion, the essence but transitioning from that to the polished final product. That's where the magic happens. We we'll say, after laying down my gestures, usually with, with a light, perhaps even with a red pencil for that added energy, I start refining the anatomy. The gestures give me direction, but, but now I'm adding uh, muscle structure, uh, ensuring proportions are accurate and giving depth to the form. Once I'm satisfied with the anatomy, I move to the detailing phase. Uh, this is where individual characteristics and personality come into play. Is the character wearing armor? Are there specific textures on their costume? These details can really make a character stand out and feel unique. Um, inking, uh, that's a world of its own. I always say inking is like adding the final touches of, of personality. It's where you decide the mood of the piece. A heavier line weight can add drama, shadow, and weight to the scene, whereas delicate lines can evoke a sense of light or fragility. But remember, inking isn't just tracing, it's interpreting the pencils in the most dynamic way possible. Throughout this process, it's essential to keep the original energy of the gesture alive. That initial uh, spirit and motion you captured should guide your hand every step of the way. Uh, exercises I do to keep my penciling skills sharp, basic shapes and forms. Um, you know, when I started out, I spent a, a lot of time just mastering simple shapes. I draw spheres, uh, cubes, cylinders, uh, all sorts of basic forms, but 
from wild angles. It's like doing push-ups for your drawing muscles, getting you ready for the more complex stuff. Anatomy breakdown. Now this is a fun one. Grab a photo of someone, could be an athlete, a dancer, and break their body down into basic geometric shapes. Understanding those underlying structures, man, it's a game changer when you're drawing dynamic heroes and villains. Gesture drawing. Give yourself like 30 seconds or a minute tops and try to capture a figure's movement. There are some cool apps and sites that flash random poses for you to uh, sketch. Uh, it's all about feeling the motion, not getting every detail. And lastly, um, a personal favorite, feedback loop. Share your sketches with fellow artists or friends. Fresh eyes can spot things you might miss. To don't be afraid of critiques. They're golden. They've helped me grow so much over the years. Remember, it's all about the journey and every pencil stroke takes you one step closer to mastering the craft. Keep at it. What are your thoughts on learning anatomy? Uh, anatomy, that's the backbone, no pun intended, of creating sort of believable characters, um, especially in the comic world. Uh, truly understanding anatomy lets us push boundaries while maintaining a sense of realism. Now, studying anatomy is a multifaceted journey. Start with life drawing. Whether it's attending sessions with live models or just sketching people at a park, capturing real human motion and form is invaluable. It teaches you the subtleties, uh, the nuances of movement and posture that you just can't get from a textbook. Speaking of textbooks, though, there are some legendary resources out there. Bern Hogarth's books like uh, Dynamic Anatomy and Dynamic Figure Drawing are fantastic. Hogarth had this unique approach where he'd break down the human body into its most fundamental shapes, uh, but always with a sense of dynamism. It's not just about knowing where each muscle goes. It's about understanding how it moves, stretches, and compresses. Now, when it comes to artists whose grasp of anatomy is simply top-notch, you have to mention Jim Lee. Jim's characters always have this fluidity to them. They're muscular without being overly rigid. Studying his work, especially his penciling stages, can give you a, a masterclass in modern comic anatomy. I've learned a ton just by examining his this is layouts and figure work. Remember, anatomy is not about rote memorization. It's about understanding. And the more you draw, the more you study artists like Hogarth and Lee, the deeper and more intuitive that understanding becomes. So keep those pencils moving and always stay curious. As comic book artists, we're not, we're not medical professionals. Our primary goal isn't to label every single tendon, bone, and muscle. Instead, it's about capturing the essence, the dynamism, the emotion of the human form. Now, don't get me wrong, a solid understanding of anatomy is foundational. It helps you create believable characters that move and interact in ways that resonate uh, with readers. But I've always believed in the philosophy of drawing what feels right, what excites you, and what looks cool on the page. Over the years, I've met artists who could name every muscle in the human body. And while that's impressive, it's not always necessary for compelling art. Sometimes focusing too much on the technicalities can stifle the fluidity and energy that makes comic art so captivating. Instead, I say, Pay attention to what catches your eye, what makes a pose look powerful, what gives a character that sense of weight or grace. Often it's not about the exact placement of the deltoid or the precise curve of the trapezius. It's about the broader strokes, the flow, the narrative of the body. Remember, comics are a visual medium where exaggeration and style often trump realism. So learn the basics, uh, get a feel for the human form, 
but don't be shackled by the minutia. Let your passion guide you. Focus on what looks and feels dynamic, and most importantly, have fun with it. What's the best advice you've gotten from other artists? Oh, that takes me back to um, some pivotal moments in my journey. Comic industry is as much about skill as it is about persistence and learning from those who've paved the way. Uh, one of the my, most unforgettable pieces of advice came from Jim Lee himself. I remember we were at a convention and he said, Ryan, if you want to break into this industry, you've got uh, to wow people with every piece of art, make it so they can't possibly ignore your work. That really stuck with me. Uh, it's not just about being good, it's about being memorable. Other mentors emphasize the importance of uh, uh, networking, building genuine relationships in the industry, showing up, being consistent, meeting deadlines. It, these things matter just as much as the quality of your artwork. But Jim's words always echo in my mind to not just be another face in the crowd, but to truly stand out. To make people pause and say, who drew this? It pushed me to continually find my craft, to take risks and to always strive for that wow factor. So to anyone trying to break into comics, hone your craft, build relationships, and always aim to leave a lasting impression with your work. How much do materials matter? You know, I've been asked this many times and I always say, uh, while, uh, while the artist is more important than the tool, uh, the materials you use do play a significant role. Think of it like cooking. A, a talented chef um, can make a great dish with uh, basic tools, but having the right equipment, it can elevate the dish to something extraordinary. And the same goes for art. The panel brush pens, for instance, are a game changer for me. The fluidity and range they offer are unmatched. Uh, they allow for those thick, dramatic strokes and can taper down to the finest of lines, giving me a versatility that's essential for dynamic comic work. Then there's the Tombow 2B pencils, just the right balance of softness for shading and firmness for, for detailed line work. Um, and uh, of course I have a soft spot for the Prismacolor red pencils, especially when I'm um, sketching out initial ideas. There's something about that red hue that just gets the creative juices flowing. But you know, beyond traditional comic tools, I've ventured into other mediums that have profoundly influenced uh, my approach to drawing. I've dabbled in oil painting, which has taught me a lot about color blending and creating mood. There's a patience and layering technique with oils that has found its way back into my comic work. And then there's sculpting in ZBrush. Digital sculpting gives you this 3D perspective, helping you think about characters and scenes in in a spatial way it's like seeing your creations come to life and understanding forms in that 3d space has definitely honed my sense of anatomy and structure on the 2d page but here's the real gem of advice experiment the world of arts supplies is vast and ever evolving what works wonders for one artist might not resonate with another the key is to Try out different mediums, figure out what complements your style, and understand what feels right in your hand. In the end, remember that while materials aren't the end-all be-all, they, they do matter. Uh, they can influence your workflow, your style, even your mood, but never let them limit you. Always be curious, always be experimenting, and always let you, your unique voice shine through no matter the tool in hand. What's more important, drawing skills or storytelling? Both are, both are crucial, but in different ways. Drawing skills, obviously, are your bread and butter as a comic artist. It's the language you use to communicate, to convey the emotions, the action, the atmosphere of a scene, honing your craft, refining your technique, and developing a distinct style uh, will undoubtedly open doors in the industry. But here's the thing. A beautifully drawn page 
without a compelling story can feel hollow. The narrative gives context to your art, driving the emotional connection for the reader. A gripping story can elevate even the simplest of drawings. If you're just starting out and looking to find your footing, I'd suggest focusing on your drawing skills first. Dive deep into anatomy, perspective, lighting, all the technical aspects. Build that you know, solid foundation. Once you have that down, start experimenting with uh, storytelling. Even if you're not a writer, understanding pacing, panel composition, and how to guide a re reader's eye through a page is vital. It's a dance between the words and the visuals. Um, Remember, um, comics are a marriage of art and narrative. You can have the most intricate, jaw-dropping um, illustrations, but if they don't serve the story, they lose their impact. Likewise, uh, a fantastic story can get lost if not presented visually in a compelling manner. In the end, strive for balance. Prioritize both, but give yourself uh, the grace to grow in stages. And always, always keep learning and evolving. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Your support really does help me make more videos like this one.